Last weekend, I visited the fully charged live event in Farnborough. Now, of course, there was the usual vast array of electric cars, the ones that you've probably already heard of and many that you won't have too. But I was there mainly to look at alternative heating and hot water technologies and chat with a variety of experts in those industries to get advice and hear about their experiences. Before I start, I just want to add that I travelled there using my electric car and that the grid serve chargers worked properly on the way there too. I plugged in, tapped my card to pay and it just worked. That's exactly as it should be. They just need more of these chargers now because at Lee Delamere Services there is only the one. Anyway, back to Fully Charged Live. First up, I noticed that there seems to be a few rivalries between competing technologies. Everyone has heard about heat pumps as a replacement technology for gas boilers, but fewer people have heard of far infrared panels. It's probably worth checking out the Fully Charged Plus interview with the team from Herschel Infrared, which it turns out has become slightly controversial due to their claimed comparison experiment between infrared heating and a heat pump. Um, I'll put a link to this in the description, um, but they claim that their heat pump experiment resulted in a COP of 1.73, which is fortunate for comparing to infrared panels because they are much closer to a COP of 1. Now, full disclosure here, I have a Herschel infrared panel in my study. It's a small study, about four meters square, and the little portable 220 watt panel warms that room up really quickly. Within about five minutes, I'm warm and the feel of the heat from it is really nice. It is just like the feel of the sun coming in through a window like they describe. Jane from Herschel was really helpful and friendly in answering all of my questions before I purchased it, and I'm very pleased with that purchase. The panel can also be controlled using the Toya Smart platform and I'll probably cover this in a future video. Whilst at the event I also had a chat with a couple of guys from Jigsaw Infrared. They were quite aggressively trying to put across infrared as being a better solution than a heat pump due to its ease of installation, low power consumption and zero maintenance. I do agree with them partially but for heating the whole of my house I'm still more likely to go down the heat pump route and I have a few reasons. Firstly, I have a traditional boiler and radiators, and in theory it should just be a case of swapping my boiler for a heat pump and upgrading a few radiators. If I want to install infrared heating panels instead, I'd need to do a bit of house bashing, run new power circuits everywhere, and I'd also have to replace my nice plumbed in heated towel ra rail radiator in our bathroom, and I don't want to be doing that. As I already have the plumbing in place for a heat pump, it would seem sensible to carry on using that and get the advantage of the higher efficiency that it provides. I also have a hot water tank and the heat pump can be used with that on days when the sun isn't shining. If you already have an electrically heated house or flat, possibly using normal convection or oil filled radiators, it makes a lot of sense to consider swapping those for infrared panels. Price-wise, there doesn't seem to be much difference between infrared panels and heat pumps. If we assume that a heat pump installation might cost about £15,000, reduced to £10,000 after the government grant, I roughly priced up infrared panels for my home that came to about £8,000 plus installation. While looking around the stands, we noticed Homely, a startup with a product designed to make using a heat pump even more efficient. The theory goes that if you control your heat pump like it was a gas boiler, turning it on when you need the heat and off during the day, then you won't achieve the full efficiency of the heat pump. But by leaving it on during that time at a lower setback temperature, the heat pump can maintain its efficiency and even though you may lose heat during those in-between hours, overall, because of that increased efficiency, you will have used less energy. It sounds counterintuitive and is a very different way of thinking uh, compared to what we're used to for traditional heating systems. Back to Homely, they are selling a replacement central heating controller specifically for heat pump systems. You tell the system when you would like your home to be at specific temperatures, for example you might need it at 18 degrees in the morning and when you're getting up ready for work and 20 degrees in the evening while you're watching TV and Homely works out the most efficient way to deliver that heat figuring out the most appropriate setback temperatures and it can even work with smart energy tariffs from Octopus to take energy costs at particular times of the day into consideration. 
One thing that was reasonably consistent across all of the heat pump installers and companies I spoke to was that you shouldn't zone a heat pump system. You should consider your whole home as one single thermal zone and not use smart TRVs which call for heat demand. Apparently that ruins the efficiency and means there's no place for my Evo home system in a heat pump world. The founder of Homely that I spoke to even mentioned that someone he was working with on the product had an Evo home system like mine and thought he could beat the algorithm using it, but it ended up costing him about 30% more in energy. The second rivalry is between your traditional hot water cylinder manufacturers, represented here by Mixergy, and the newer thermal batteries by Sunamp. Here I'm a bit conflicted because I think that thermal batteries are the way forward but Sunamp themselves weren't actually at Fully Charged Live to represent their product and instead were relying on an installation company to fight their corner. Mixergy, on the other hand, were there in full force. A smart hot water cylinder compatible with traditional boilers, heat pumps, immersion heating, with remote monitoring, all of the smarts that you could ever want, but that increased complexity comes at a cost of annual maintenance, more moving parts, lots of add-on boxes to go wrong. Sunamp, by contrast, uses phase changing materials. They move from one state to another when heated, allowing them to store a lot of heat for a long time. You don't store hot water in a heat battery, you store heat. You then get heat from electricity, which could be redirected solar or from a heat pump. And when you need hot water, the cold water is pulled through the heat battery and you end up with near instant 55 degrees of hot water. There are no moving parts, no maintenance, very little to go wrong. It's again a very different way of thinking about hot water. It is, however, also a lot more expensive. They, they were quoting about £3,000 for an installed sun amp versus about £2,000 for a mixergy with all the bells and whistles, um, which is again probably twice the price of a basic hot water tank with an immersion heater anyway. I'm going to wrap this video up now and I will of course revisit these subjects if I make a proper decision and actually have something installed. I think 2023 might be the year of the heat pump for our house but we'll have to see how it goes. Anyway, if you'd like to see more videos from me then please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.